Questions? Todd, how would you assess Kareem Orr's uh, job on Chad Hansen on Saturday? I thought he did a good job, did a solid job on him. Um, you know, I'm obviously very impressed with uh, Hansen. I thought he was a very good receiver. We obviously did a really good job on him, a great job on him in the second half. But uh, did good. Todd, some of the uh, defensive things that you've put in this season that maybe have been a little bit different in the past, is that giving you more flexibility with what you're doing within games? You know, I mean, the biggest thing that I, you know, I can assess to this point is just, you know, we, we need to, you know, we're, we need to just get back to, I mean, real, really focus on just fundamentals. The thing that's happened to us is just critical errors. You know, um, we'll have some guys playing uh, – really, really well, all but three plays, but those three plays, they give up 14 points or something, you know, so it's just kind of one of those things. I mean, uh, alignment, stance, um, keys, and first step. And so uh, uh, I think that we probably were trying to do too much uh, earlier in the season maybe for, for where we're at. We're trying to find where that happy medium is because you have to do, you know, you can't get, you, get, you, you can't just be just, Completely simple. So, but you got to be able to execute what you're trying to execute. So, um, yeah, I mean, and, and I think we're figuring out what we can do and those type of things. Uh, Coach, uh, USC right now seems to be over here. USC seems to be in a, a little of a funk right now, a one and three. Um, what are you seeing different when you compare them to 2015? Uh, very similar team, very talented. I mean, as talented of a team. Uh, we, we will not play and have not played against better running backs. Uh, we um, – receivers. I mean, uh, they, got, they got four or five receivers that are big time. It, it, this will be the best offensive line we've played against. Uh, they're, they're tight ends. I mean, they're very, very, very talented, so they look very similar in that regard. Uh, uh, you know, defensively, big – Talented, physical, talented in the back end, uh, dynamic in the special teams uh, with the Dory. Um, so they look very similar. They've uh, played Alabama and they played Stanford and, uh, you know, they played Utah. <coughs> so um, <clears throat> I just think they played really good people and they've been in really close games. You know, uh, they got obviously got, got beat uh, pretty soundly by Alabama, but. Uh, they played Stanford, and I mean that was that was fairly close. And then uh, Utah was a really close game, and they turned the ball over and kind of uh, hurt themselves. But um, they're they're as, as talented as any team will play. I mean, this is probably the most talented team uh, <clears throat> physically, speed wise, that we're going to play against. And uh, um, you know, obviously going into on the road, uh, we've got to do a do a great job of, of playing Sun Devil football. So that's. Uh, you know, their record is not indicative of what type of team they are. Todd, you mentioned several times you guys have not pressured as much as you have in, in previous years. What, what factors have gone into that? Uh, I don't know. You probably ask Coach Patterson. He, he, he calls the uh, defenses. So uh, uh, I think that we've tried to be adaptive. We spent a lot of time researching and not researching plays. We researched our players. And... Uh, and we also knew coming in, we're going to have a young secondary. This is the youngest secondary we've ever had. I mean, we've always had, uh, you know, more veteran group. Uh, and and I'm, I'm, you know, Lyle, I thought Lyle played one of his best games. I thought, uh, I think Armand's playing really solid. Uh, we just got to, you know, we just got, you know, um, so Armand, Lyle, Kareem Oro guys are all with experience. And so, uh, you know, the other two positions are guys that don't have experience. And so we're learning as we go and we're getting better. And, and the good thing, we've been able to do that and win. So, um, um, but uh, we, we, we're getting back up there and the, uh, we're moving, moving up in the sacks and moving up in the TFLs. And, uh, and, and we, we pressured a little bit more um, last week. But uh, uh, it just really, uh, we tried to look at, 
And I thought we thought we had to look at that that bunch, you know, that, that let's adapt to what we're doing. Uh, and then, you know, it's difficult because the less you pressure, the, the obviously then you need to be able to, you know, be a little bit more uh, diverse in your coverage packages. And so you just got to try to find that happy medium there, you know. But uh, the thing up to this point has just been, you know, just making mistakes and, and, and uh, uh, you know, um, you know, we, uh, you know, leaving a guy, you know, like, uh, we we didn't do we didn't leave guys uncovered last game. You know, we we did a good job of that. We just uh, we gave a couple of fades, and then and you know, then you know sometimes that happens. But uh, the screenplay we're supposed to have two people on it, and neither one of them are on it. So that's you know that's kind of the things that's kind of happened. So, um, but I do think that our vertical coverage is is improved. Um, and um, the factors that kind of went into it, I don't know, I, I guess that's kind of the factors that went into it, but I think the biggest thing, and, and Coach Patterson called most of the fronts towards, you know, middle part of last year, um, and uh, I help him with the coverage stuff and things like that, and TJ does, but uh, uh, he's totally doing it, so uh, uh, we're just trying to keep a happy medium, and, and it also depends on the situation, how much we're doing. There's some, some areas where we are pressuring pretty good, um, but, um, you know, and if you don't do it as much, then you're not as good at it, you know, so that's kind of how we, we're just trying to get the happy medium for where we're at. I don't know if that makes sense, but, uh, uh, we just won't win. And I think whatever we've done has been, you know, I mean, obviously we've, uh, um, played some really, really powerful offenses that's that's contributed to it but also I think we've had a lot of growth and we've tried I think we've kind of settled down to maybe what the lineup's going to be I think putting Lyle back at Spur helped um so you think I don't know maybe not 2012 because you know we we're just I think it was pretty simple I, I can't you know yeah, I can't remember back that far, but uh, um, um, I think in 2012 it'd probably be similar parallel to that year. We 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 really started pressured more in 13 and 14, and it had a lot to do with you know some of the guys we had too. You know, so so it, I think that's what's important is to be adaptive to your players and what their skills and talents are and what they can handle. And, and that, I think that's the biggest challenge. And I think, you know, and, you know one of the things I, I love about our guys is these, these guys this year, you want to check that box defensively. When you've got to make a play, when you've got to make a stop, you know, our guys have risen to the occasion on that. We just got to eliminate, uh, you know, the errors. And um, 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 we play really – and we, we need to play a complete game. You know what I mean? And I think that uh, that just I think we're getting better and we're working hard. And the great great thing is we've been able to to learn and get better and and and, and be four zero. Uh, Coach, in, in the past, you, you you've mentioned how uh, important Coach Rushing's job is on the sideline. Can you expand on some of the challenges Who? that he, Coach Rushing? Oh yeah, uh, and some of the challenges that he uh, faces in that role. Yeah, TJ is. Uh, Obviously, uh, you know, I say he's young, but I think he's like 34 years old, so I don't know if that's young or not, but uh, um, young to me. So uh, he uh, he has just done a great job. He uh, um, he basically communicates with the secondary down the, on the field, uh, communicates with them on the sideline. Um, obviously, uh, 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 myself and he are, work with the secondary. Um, he, but he's their coach. He he runs the meetings and those type of things. But um, um, down the field, that's what he's basically doing. He's basically watching the other team's receivers, watching our technique, and coaching those guys up on that. And he's uh, done a great job. And it's great to have somebody that I'm comfortable with. That you know, he's with me for two years as a graduate assistant, and then and then uh, he's brought a lot of you know played in the NFL for for five or six years and. Uh, he brings a lot there, and and it's just different, you know, with the players. I think it's a uh, um, we've um, I've enjoyed getting to, to work with him. Great person, great guy, smart. Gonna be a he'll be a guy that'll 
uh, be a secondary coach and eventually a defense coordinator and a head coach one of these days. He's got he's got that kind of character and that kind of leadership. Uh, Todd, two parts to this. Uh, one, do you think Christian Sam will be back this week? And the second is, um, do you anticipate possibly playing Salamo, Christian, DJ, and Layu on the field together against certain types of defenses, offenses on base downs? <clears throat> Yeah, depending on the grouping, I'd love to have all those guys on the field at the same time. Uh, we'd planned on that. We just got to get them all healthy. And I, I really just don't know. I'm, I'm hoping uh, we think Kristen's get, he was getting b better last week, and uh, we're hoping that he'll uh, he will uh, be ready to go this week. I, I don't I don't know though. Anyone else? You said after the game that you challenged the. Your defensive front, your four-man pass rush at halftime, did, did you think they were better in the second half? And overall, how would you assess that group? Uh, I don't know. I'm watching so much USC today. I'm really not – really hadn't thought a lot about that. But uh, um, I, thought, I, thought they, uh, I thought they did some – I thought Ami played his best game inside. Uh, JoJo played well. Did some good things against the rush. Crump, I think he's one of the ones he's second in the league or something in sacks. So, uh, yeah, I thought they played better. But I, I think they've been, yeah, you know, our defensive line is the strength, our, you know, our, our, up the middle. Our, our defensive line and our linebackers, uh, Salamo and the D-line and, you know, DJ have been the, is the strength of our, our run defense and our ability there is, has, is the strength of our defense. And, and so they're never going to, you know, um, yeah, you know, they're never going to, you know, I'm always going to have a higher expectation than what they, they play at. So, but, um, yeah, I thought they did. I thought they responded well. Coach, how did you feel about Wilkins' performance in the Cal game compared to the UTSA game? <laughs> uh, good. I guess I don't know UTSA and Cal. Um, yeah, I think he's grown every week. Um, um, you know, I mean, uh, I think he's you know he he faced adversity in both games and responded well. Um, he's four no quarterback, so he's done well. Okay. Who asked me that? I couldn't even see where they're at. Oh, okay, gotcha. Todd, this being your first trip to the Coliseum since a fairly famous pass play two years ago, I'm wondering, do you, or do, would you have any reflections on that, or did the situation now not allow you to sit back for a moment and reflect yeah, on that moment? I, I reflected on it when I seen Jalen outside the tunnel before the game. I hugged his neck, thanked him again. Um, but, uh, no, I mean, I, that was, you know, I'd be a liar to you if I didn't tell you that that's a, a great memory of mine that I'll always, always be uh, – uh, special to me, and I'd love to cre go create another one. But I kind of I have a short memory, so I remember last year a lot more than I remember that year. But I do remember that play. How about uh, I wanted to get your thoughts on Sam Darnold, what you see in their quarterback, um, and I don't know if you've seen a lot of tape on Max Brown and how you compare those two. Yeah, I've seen both of them. The uh, uh, very good. I mean, he's uh, Donald's a. Uh, uh, they run some read zone with him. Very athletic, can run. Um, both of them are very similar arms. Throw the deep ball really well. Uh, hit the seams really well. Um, and, and I think both of them, you know, manage their what they're doing very well. So uh, uh, they're similar. The difference is is the athleticism of Donald. Todd, I guess uh, Clay Hilton was uh, the play caller sometimes last year, but maybe not always. Are you seeing differences in what they're doing uh, structurally with their offense um, this year or not? It's very similar to me. Yeah, last one. <clears throat> um, Zane is close to getting this national field goal record now. What, what are the things that have stood out the most as he's progressed in his career to get him to the point where he's been able to to do this, kick 50 yarders now, just his consistency. What, what, what do you think is responsible? Well, between for his, between his, I mean, obviously as a freshman, he was a very gifted young man. Started for us, did a great job. I think he's averaged like 25 field goals a year or something like that. Um, 
he's just worked his tail off. I mean, he um, didn't even do our kickoff duties in, as a sophomore. I think Alex did. Uh, am I right? Okay. And um, um, he just got in the weight room and trained and got so much stronger. And, uh, man, the power that he has. He, you know, and he's worked his tail. I've never seen anybody work in able to develop that at, at, from at, at that level. You know what I mean? He's in, it, it, it improved dramatically. I mean, he improved his kickoffs 15, 20 yards. It's pretty remarkable. So, and that's a huge uh, luxury for us to have the field goal, I mean, the, the kickoffs going out of the end zone. And then uh, from a field goal standpoint, he's, he, he's just really worked. He's worked very diligently and uh, uh, to get better and better. And uh, um, man, he's a guy that deserves every, everything he's, he's, all the accolades he's receiving because he's worked his tail off. It's, he's just done it the old fashioned way. He's worked hard and, and kept his head down and great young man. And uh, um, it's, it's really remarkable if you think about what, what he's close to accomplishing and what he's already accomplished is pretty amazing. But what is it like five more? Five more, and that's 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 a pretty pretty big deal. So I'm really proud of him, and uh, I tell you what, it's it's nice to. I don't, I don't know, I don't know what we're going to do now. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do in the future because I mean, wow, I'm just getting I'm pretty spoiled on making making points every time you get to the forty. And that you know what's amazing is how much you know he was a really good kicker. I mean, he he become I think an elite kicker. And then I think he's become even higher than that um, because I used to think of the 30-yard line, you know, as sophomore and, and early his junior year. And then I've pushed, we've pushed that up where, you know, I mean, the 40-yard line, anywhere in there, we, we feel pretty good. And, and, um, and, and he's, been, he's been just really solid. Gave me a little scare on the one, though. All right.